Hello there. Well, I want to discuss half wave rectification and full wave rectification. I'm going to refer to a few diagrams that I have got off the internet as I don't have any books to actually refer to. And I've forgotten a lot of this stuff, so I actually have to refresh my own memory by reading up on it a little bit. I don't claim to know all that much. What I do know I'd like to share with you. I want to start out with uh, the basics of uh, half wave and full wave rectification. And for simplification we're going to use diodes like the uh, uh, 1N 2007 and diodes such as that. And it doesn't really matter, but rectification is rectification whether it takes the form of a tube or whether it takes the form of a solid state diode. Uh, the only basic difference is other than having a filament such as in a vacuum tube, um, your voltage drop can be from 50 to 100 volts uh, across a vacuum tube, whereas using a, a solid state diode, uh, you may get uh, from 0.7 to as much as one volt drop across that diode. So uh, if you're ever going to put a solid state diode in place of a tube, which is common in a lot of cases, you always make sure you have a series resistor in series with the diode, and usually the wattage can be like 5 or 10 watts depending on the current draw. Anyways, I'd like to go into this now, and remember I don't know all that much, so what little I, I do know I want to share with you, and most of the stuff that I got is uh, kind of like a refresher course for me too, uh, by going on the internet and reading up on it again. Boy, I'll tell you, when you get old, you forget a lot. This circuit here is a half wave rectifier, along with its output waveform. When the top end of the transformer secondary is positive with respect to the bottom end, current will flow from the anode to the cathode of the diode. The downward, I'm sorry, the forward drop across the diode is small compared to the voltage of the transformer and almost all of the voltage appears across the load resistor. The positive half cycle appears across the load. When the top end of the transformer secondary is negative, with respect to the bottom end, current will not flow through the series combination of the diode and the load resistor. If there is no current through the load resistor, there can be no voltage drop across it. The voltage of the transformer secondary is dropped across the diode and does not appear across the load resistor. Thus we have only half of each cycle appearing across the load. This should be called half cycle rectification, which I think it should be too, but was named in the early years of electricity prior to 1920 when people were not as careful with the terminology as they are today. The process which is going on in this particular diagram, as shown, is called half-wave rectification. Here shows the output waveform of a full-wave rectifier. You will note that the pulsations occur twice as often in this figure as they did in the half-wave rectifier figure. A higher rate of pulsations is easier to smooth out. It is for this reason that a half-wave rectifier is rarely used. A full-wave rectifier must use a center tap transformer. It is required in order to make the circuit work properly. First of all, the two diodes, the two halves 
of the transformer work alternately. They can handle twice as much current as either one working alone. In brief here, on the first half of the cycle, when the top end of the secondary is positive, with respect to the center tap, the bottom end is negative with respect to the center tap. Note that the load is returned to the center tap, not to the bottom of the secondary. Diode D1 is forward biased and diode D2 is reverse bias. D1 conducts current which flows back through the load and back to the center tap. The first half cycle appears across the load with the top end of the load resistor positive. On the second half of the cycle, the top of the secondary is negative with respect to the center tap and the bottom is positive with respect to the center tap. Diode D1 is reverse bias and diode D2 is forward bias. D1 does not conduct but D2 does. Remember that the bottom end of the transformer secondary is now positive and when D2 conducts current flows downward through the load resistor making its top end positive. Current flows through the load on both halves of the input sine wave and both halves appear positive across the load. This process is called full wave rectification and the circuit is called a full wave center tap rectifier. a filtering capacitor across the output and the results as to what happens when a filter capacitor is added to a rectifier output. This figure shows a full wave rectifier. One filter capacitor and an output waveform, although vacuum tube power supplies always have additional filtering elements such as an LC, an inductor and capacitor in other words, and an RC, a resistor capacitor uh, sections. The critical part of most filters is the first capacitor. This also brings to mind that when you increase capacity on the old radios and so forth you're working on, let's say it's a 10 microfarad capacitor, it's very important not to go too too high on it. Some of these real old radios in their early 30s uh, may have only had like 8 or 10 microfarads. If you was to put a 40 or 50 in there, your input voltage would be so high going there you could damage the rest of the radio uh, with too much of a voltage, uh, B plus voltage, and things would be a little too high. So try to keep your uh, capacitors within a reasonable limit. Well, anyways. As discussion of how this circuit works, on a positive half cycle, the capacitor will charge through the series combination of half of the transformer secondary winding and diode D1. Because this is a low resistance current path, the capacitor will charge quickly. When the positive half cycle falls away, the diode is reverse bias and cannot conduct any current. The capacitor will discharge through the resistor until another positive half cycle comes up to recharge it. As you can see on the diagram there, the lines across these bumps, you could call them boobies, <coughs> anyways, uh, that kind of represents the smoothing out action, more or less, of what a filter capacitor will do from just converting it to from pulsating DC to a more smoother DC output. The lower the resistance of the resistor, the greater the load current. The faster the capacitor will discharge and the lower the lower the voltage when the next positive half cycle comes along. A way to keep the voltage from falling so low between the times when the capacitor is 
charge is to make the capacitor bigger, in other words, more capacity. Because a full wave rectifier is being used, the change, the charging, I'm sorry, the charging peaks occur more often than would be in the case of a half wave rectifier, which I showed you earlier in the uh, video. Thus the capacitor will not have as much time to discharge and the voltage will not fall as low as it would with a half wave circuit. The amount of ripple, the variation in other words, in the voltage across the capacitor will be less. The humanoid must not escape. For your convenience, there's a restroom located in the rear of the coach.